the Lagos State Government has lost at least 234 million naira to the closure of toll gates as the NSARS protest on the island enters its ninth day. The punch has learned. However, the state has continued to generate money from adverts at the toll plazas. The figure was obtained from the daily and monthly targets set for the toll gates by the government, which owns the toll gates and, of course, which are being managed by the Lekki Concession Company. The Lekki Ikoi Link Bridge was expected to generate about 10 million naira daily, while the Admiralty Circle Plaza along the Lekki Ekpe Expressway was not expected to generate less than 16.6 .6 million naira a day. Joining us is economist Tunji Andrews to talk about this economic implication of the ongoing protests. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'll just go straight and ask you, over 200 million estimated in uh, just over a week, and then we know that uh, this has, uh, it, it's not inclusive of businesses that have been closed, uh, the effect of restricted movement and all of that. Give us a, a sense of the wider implication, uh, economic implication of this protest. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so one of the, I think one of the um, key thoughts for the protesters is if they are going to protest peacefully, um, they need to have a pressure point to be able to at least get the, the attention of the government. Um, they've thought about several ways, and I think they've been able to come to, um, you know, just halting economic activity in the, in the state. Um, the toll gate was a very strategic place to, to hold uh, their meetups, uh, which of course is a place that uh, the Lagos State Government will um, directly lose revenue. This is not even, um, this is on the hour, on the minute, on the second uh, losses for the Lagos State Government. I know that I've seen the punch uh, report talking about 240 million, but I do think it's a lot more than that. Um, I do think it's a lot more than that. Um, it's my estimates uh, at least double that figure. Uh, but yes, we, we just go with what Lagos State tells us that they collect from the tolls on a daily basis. Does this have a, a, a wider effect, you know, on the economy of Lagos State? And I'm referring to the fact that we're just, well, still dealing with a pandemic and economic challenges from a pandemic. Um, how do you think this might also affect the um, city of Lagos itself and, of course, its residents financially? It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that this happened just um, directly after the pandemic. Um, it's, it's definitely going to affect economic activity. Um, people are finding it difficult from getting from one point to another. That is a major challenge. Um, and it, the economic activity in most parts of the state were completely halted for about a week. So that is a problem. Um, and, and, you know, all of this just ties into GDP in one way or the other. Um, and economic activity is not like a switch where you just put it on and off. It's, it's you know, it rolls into uh, uh, itself. So it's just a bad picture. We were already going into recession um, once we get the, the uh, reports from the second quarter GDP. Uh, but all of this is just going to accelerate that push towards recession one way or another. How bad do you think it will get if this protest doesn't end soon? <laughs> um, really bad um, for many reasons. Um, you must understand that quite a lot of people in Nigeria do not have the privilege of being able to plan very long term. Um, and I mean that for many reasons. So, for instance, the agricultural value chain doesn't have the ability to be able to plan um, six months in advance because they don't have storage. Um, they have to transport goods intermittently. Um, I mean, even, even things like, um, 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 what do you call it, uh, receivables for companies and their stock, um, they have to take it intermittently because they don't want to, you know, they don't have enough storage to be able to pack tons and tons of things. So they need that, um, you know, easy move of traffic from time to time. And if this continues past a week, um, uh, it has passed a week. If it continues longer than this, then it starts to affect value chains of a lot of economic activity. And we start to feel it in food. We start to feel it in, in receivables. We start to feel it in major parts of our lives. Um, I, I just, I just, 
You know, for me, I, I didn't think it would last this long. I didn't think uh, the government would have um, sat back to allow it get this far. But unfortunately, it has gotten here. But I think um, urgent steps to uh, try and, you know, um, you know, at, at what give in to the demands of the protesters should be at the top of uh, the government's mind at this particular time because we need economic activity back. Um, we, are, we are flirting with recession right now. This is not the time we should be shutting down our economy. Right. On the flip side, really, uh, the business owners are joining the demonstration. A report by Plus TV correspondent um, shows um, some people stuck in traffic where, oh, I'm stuck in traffic. So long as we achieve the purpose of this protest, I'm good. What interpretation would you give to uh, such you know, responses to the protest, even knowing that we are going to suffer huge economic losses? You know, that, that, what you just explained is not economic. <laughs> um, I know. So it's, it's more around human nature. Um, they are looking at it from the perspective of, we have been feeling pain for a long time. Um, we have been going through um, all sorts of um, misnomer in, in the Nigerian situation, in Nigerian structure. So if we can sort it now, we know that we will have a better future. So um, I think they're looking at the long-term benefits of um, a, 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 a government coming to a better account of, of their stewardship. Uh, so that, of course, is one of the things that is spurring a lot of Nigerians, a lot of business people. And you find that a lot of businesses have shut down um, to, in, in solidarity. Some of them, in, uh, they're not trying to participate or align with this, the protest, but they also know that there are people might want to protest. So they said, you know, you guys can work from home as long as you, you know, get your deliverables. I'm talking about even large companies, multi-billion Naira companies in the country who have actually shut down their operations during this time. So it's it's you see that the, it's a general collective. Everybody is, um, you know, uh, aligned with this conversation one way or another. Uh, we might all differ in the way, uh, in the persecution of this or in the execution of it, but you do see that um, the larger Nigerian public is aligned with this conversation, aligned with this narrative, and aligned with the entire conversation. Tunji Andrews, I, I, want, I want you to also quickly speak on the emergence of Bitcoin um, in the last one week as a means of uh, uh, financial transfers and uh, financial payments after the CBN had blocked, um, allegedly blocked some of the accounts that were being used um, uh, to f facilitate the protest. Um, would you say that it has come to stay um, in Nigeria um, fully? Oh yes, I mean it's 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 not a Nigerian thing; it's a global thing. Cryptocurrencies will stay. Uh, cryptocurrencies are the future of currencies. Um, what I do not know is which one of them will be the mainstay cryptocurrency. Um, it's just like with the emergence of social media many 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 years ago. I think over a decade ago, I think we had MySpace, High Five at the time. And while it looked like MySpace was going to be the Facebook of today, um, we, we do not see MySpace anymore. We do not see High Five anymore. So in the ev evolution of um, Bitcoin, I do not know which one of them will be the mainstay or which few ones will be the, the, the future of cryptocurrencies. But cryptocurrencies are definitely going to stay. They are here and we might as well you know, um, align with it. I do know that... Um, the authorities, the central bank and the Securities and Exchange Commission are looking into it um, seriously, uh, seeing how they can, you know, put better framework around it. Because one of the things that uh, countries worry about is the anonymity um, of, um, of being able to own such uh, um, assets. But I think once they're able to come around to putting a framework around it, we should be able to use it more structured uh, in Nigeria. But it's here to stay, and it's only a matter of time. All right. Sounds pretty good uh, from my end. And um, I, I was hoping that we could also maybe even talk about, if you can do this in 10 seconds, I don't know if it's possible, but quickly talk about you know, okay. what the closure of uh, the toll gate and the hardship 
um, really says about the planning of Lagos State. Um, if one, you know, toll gate has caused this much pain and hardship, um, what does that say? Quickly, please. All right. So uh, I, I wish I could do this quickly, but uh, let me just this. Uh, so uh, there is a there is a rumor going around uh, that uh, one of the reasons why our rail, um, you know, that rail around Marina, why the work has stalled on it is because um, uh, it's, it's a rumor. I don't know if it's true that money has finished, uh, <laughs> and it does make a question of did we really plan properly? I mean, even in the Bible, it says do not start a project without planning so that you don't get halfway and then you get stuck. So if we if we have such a big project and we've not been able to execute it and think forward enough to be able to put it in such a context that we reinvest the money, then it shows you that we do not plan very adequately in this part of uh, the country. But yes, I, I want to believe that this is an eye-opener for Lagos State and they might uh, take uh, better accounts in the future and start planning properly. I hope they are, All right. uh, you know, and I want to believe because I know they're brilliant people in the Lagos State administration, but I think this is an eye-opener and they, they would probably start to think of better models to work into the future. Tunya Andrews, thank you so much for speaking with us. Really enjoyed that conversation. Thank Looking you for having me. Always a pleasure.